Today I am painting a wildflower landscape with flowers at the forefront and lots of leaves layered in the background. If you would like to follow along and paint with me, feel free to do so. I'll explain all of the materials that I'm using and tell you step by step exactly what I'm doing throughout the entire painting process. This tutorial is beginner friendly, so this video is for you no matter what level of painting experience you have or even if this is your first time painting or if you want to sit back, relax, and simply enjoy watching me paint, then this video is for you as well. In terms of supplies, I am using watercolor paper that is 7 by 5 inches. You can use whatever size of paper you want, but since gouache is a type of watercolor, using watercolor paper is important. The paper needs to be thick enough that it will be able to hold the water from the paint. I taped the paper down to my desk with washi tape. You want to make sure that your washi tape is placed down evenly and not crooked at all before pressing it down against the paper because however your washi tape is placed, that is what the border of your finished painting will look like. You can also change how thick or thin the border of your painting will be by covering more or less of the paper with washi tape. So if I wanted a thicker border, I could have used a thicker washi tape so that more of the paper was covered. In addition to giving your painting a nice clean border when you remove the tape at the end, taping down the page with washi tape is helpful for holding the paper in place so that it's not moving around while you're painting. You also want to be careful with the type of tape that you're using. When removing the tape from your finished painting, you don't want it to tear the paper. I haven't had an issue with that using washi tape, but if you use a more adhesive tape instead, you could have an issue with the paper tearing when you remove it. In terms of paint, I'm using the Himmy gouache paint set that comes in 18 colors. If you're new to gouache, this is a very good beginner paint set because it comes with a lot of colors, it's great quality, and it's relatively inexpensive. I got mine from Amazon for only $24. I'll link it in the description of this video in case you want to get it yourself. For this painting, I mixed my colors in a separate paint palette, but the Hemi gouache paint set that I mentioned actually comes with a flat paint palette that would also work. A few other supplies you'll need are a cup of water to rinse your brushes off between colors and a rag or a paper towel. You'll use that to dry your brushes off and make sure none of the paint is left on there before using your brush with a new paint color. That way you avoid mixing any paint colors that you don't want to. Lastly, I'm using a variety of paint brushes. There's not one specific brand of paint brushes that I use, but it is good to have an assortment of different sizes as well as a mix of round brushes and flat brushes because all of those will create different types of paint strokes. Using a round brush will look more natural when you're painting details because it's easy to vary how thick or thin each paint stroke is. On the other hand, a flat brush is good for painting straight lines and filling in the larger areas of your painting. Now that all of my supplies are set up, I am painting the base layer of the wildflower landscape. I mixed one of the green colors from the paint set with a bit of black to create a darker green color for the base. I'm using a large flat brush to cover the entire page with that color. With gouache, the more water that you add, the thinner the paint will be. I used less water at the bottom of the painting 
because I want it to be a bit darker there than at the top. Don't worry too much about the base color looking perfect. I know it looks a bit streaky right now, but I'll be covering the page with so many flowers and layers of leaves that you won't be able to tell in the finished painting. For this type of painting, where most of it will be covered up, it's really not necessary to spend too much time on making the base layer perfect. Now that the page is all covered in a dark green base layer of paint, I'm starting to paint the flowers. I'm painting the flowers first instead of the leaves because they're the focal point of the painting and where all of the leaves are going to branch off from. Because of that, I need to decide where to place the flowers before I can start painting the leaves. When deciding where I want the flowers to be, I'm keeping in mind that I want the top of my painting to appear like there's more light than the bottom, so I'll need to make more flowers visible at the top. Although I want most of my flowers at the top, I'm still making sure to add flowers scattered throughout the rest of the painting. I'm painting the flowers a variety of different sizes to make the painting more interesting. In real life, not every flower is going to look the same, so you don't want to paint them that way. It's good if the flowers look different and have imperfections. That makes them look more natural. You can see I did that not only with the size of the flowers, but also with each of the petals. Instead of making each petal perfect and round, I decided to give the petals rougher edges to create the appearance of a bunch of different petals layered on top of each other. I chose to paint my flowers white to really make them pop against the green background, but you could paint them whatever color you want. I will add more white paint on top of each of the flowers later so that they don't look as patchy, but I do want the flowers to dry first so that it will be easier to add more thick paint. In the meantime, I'm moving on to painting the leaves. This is definitely my favorite part to paint. I feel like it is so satisfying and therapeutic to layer all of the different shades of green on top of each other. All the different layers of leaves add so much depth to the painting, making it look more realistic and really bringing the whole painting together. To paint the leaves, I'm starting with my darkest shades of green first, then progressing to lighter colors with each layer. The first layer of leaves that I'm starting with is what will be the furthest away in my painting. If you think about the light coming from the front of the painting, those leaves in the back will have the least light on them, and that's why I'm painting them the darkest. For my initial darkest layer of leaves, I mixed green and black gouache paint again to create the dark green color that I'm painting with. Once a layer is finished and I move on to the next layer of leaves, I'm mixing in more green and a bit of white paint with the previous color on my paint palette to make the color noticeably lighter with each new layer of leaves. I'm repeating that process with different shades of green five times. While painting the leaves, it's important to consider that they're stemming from the flowers as their center rather than randomly painting them across the page. Also, going back to thinking about light, I mentioned when painting the flowers that I want the top of my painting to appear like there's more light than at the bottom. Because of that, I'm primarily only painting darker layers of leaves at the bottom, whereas the top of my painting also has lighter layers of leaves. This helps portray that there's less light shining on the bottom of my painting. Adding variety to your painting through light and shadows makes it more interesting and dynamic rather than making the entire painting look the same throughout. Now that the leaves are finished, 
I'm adding some final details to the painting. The flowers are dry, so I'm adding some thicker white paint in the middle of each one. That way the flowers look more filled in towards their center and not quite so translucent. I also decided to add a bit of light pink to certain parts of some of the flowers to create some variety with the color. Since I want the pink color to be very subtle, I mixed only a very small amount of pink from my gouache paint with the white color. If you want a darker pink instead, you would just add a larger amount of pink when mixing the colors. The flower petals are done now, so I'm using a golden paint color with my thinnest round paintbrush to add small dots as details in the center of each flower. To finish off my painting and tie it all together, I decided to add that same gold color to the leaves as well. With the final layer of leaves finished, my painting is complete. With the painting done, it is time for one of the most satisfying parts of painting, the tape peel. Thanks to the washi tape, there's no paint underneath where the tape was, leaving a very nice, neat border. This was such a fun painting to complete. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I would really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you would like to see more videos from me. I typically share a lot of lifestyle videos on my YouTube channel, but I've recently gotten back into painting and some other creative projects like scrapbooking, so I do want to share a bit more of that on my channel. If you've been subscribed to me for a while, then you'll remember that I used to draw a lot on my YouTube channel for my monthly bullet journal setup videos. I don't use a bullet journal anymore but creativity is still a huge part of me and I am excited to be sharing my artwork with you in this video. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more painting videos from me because I can definitely share more of these. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!